As violent as boxing can be, there's a certain decorum fighters have to follow if they really want to become a champion. It's a combat sport after all, not a fight to death. That being said, some contenders failed to get the memo and went a tad too far in the process. Which boxers are we talking about, though? And what do they do to shock the world? For all this and more, stay tuned. First up on our list is the most recent moment from professional boxer Hassan Adam, who caused Jaws to drop when he refused to go down after being smacked around by fellow contender Jana Beck Allen. Canuli. It all happened a couple weeks ago when Adam found himself facing off against the 2016 Olympian in a 10-round bout in Las Vegas. And considering how much the French Cameroonian fighter had been talking trash prior to the fight, there's no doubt that he thought he would have an easy time taking on Alam Canuli despite his Olympic prowess. What resulted was the exact opposite situation though, with the Kazakhstan native going on to dominate Adam in the ring, resulting in the referee bringing the bout to an end early. Fans watched in horror as Adam rose to his feet just after victory had been given to Alim Kanuli in the eighth round, with the French Cameroonian insisting that the match continue. In one of the craziest statements of the history of professional boxing, he attempted to sway the referee by saying, no, 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 I'm ready to die. Suffice to say, this did nothing to prevent the referee from calling the bout off, knowing full well that Nadam was in no condition to continue. As we mentioned earlier, boxing is a sport, not a death match. And at the end of the day, it's the job of the referee to make sure that everyone is safe, despite how they might feel. Next up, we have one of the most interesting infamous moments in boxing history, which came in the form of Mike Tyson actually taking a few bites out of his fellow contender Evander Holyfield. Something that was so shocking to the boxing community that it's still talked about now a full 24 years later. To truly understand why Tyson thought this would be a good idea, though, we have to take a look at the build-up to the fight. You see, Tyson and Holyfield were the biggest names in heavyweight boxing at the time, and although Holyfield was the underdog by a significant margin at the time, his win over Tyson a few months earlier meant that the second fight was going to be won for the ages. Tyson desperately wanted to win. He had just secured the championship title from Bruce Seldon, after all, and would do absolutely anything to keep it attached to his name. So when Holyfield apparently headbutted Tyson in the ring, he metaphorically took his gloves off and decided to bring his own set of underhanded moves to the bout. As a result, the heavyweight champion went on to bite Holyfield once on the neck, which caused the referee to stop the bout and warn Tyson about unlawful contact. But as you can imagine, this was enough to bring an end to the anger. And so Tyson bit Holyfield a second time, this time taking a clump out of his contender's left ear. Ouch! Up next, when Tyson Fury wouldn't stop running his mouth. Not all shocking boxing moments are physical, though. Tyson Fury, for example, got himself into some pretty deep water by making a couple of homophobic comments a couple of years ago when he was just starting to make some waves on the professional boxing scene. As we're well aware, boxing is not the ultimate fighting championship, where trash talking is not only expected, but encouraged in an effort to sell more tickets. But it looks like Fury wanted the best of both worlds, and as a result, went on to say some peculiar things in an attempt to become boxing's own Conor McGregor. Worse yet, he decided to spread those hateful comments of his through the use of social media. For those of you who missed out on the strange trash talk, go and take a look at Tyson's official Twitter account, which saw him tweet that David Price was an S-house scouse prick, and that David Ballou was none other than his gay lover. Gone are the days when you can call someone gay as a hit to their ego, which makes sense considering how being gay isn't exactly considered to be wrong anymore. So it makes sense that the British Boxing Council had to call him and remind him of the decorum that needs to be upheld when it comes to the combat sport. Getting into your opponent's head to increase your chances of winning is one thing, but being hateful towards a group of people, that's another. And now Ricardo Mayorga takes a swipe at De La Hoya's family. Fury wasn't the only boxer to shock the public with his words, though. Ricardo Mayorga was another who took things a bit too far when trying to get under his opponent's skin. This all happened back in 2006 when Mayorga was set to face off against Oscar De La Hoya. But before the bout could take place, the contenders had to first make it through the pre-fight press conference. And for a short while, it felt like like Mayorga might be kicked from the league, knowing full well that his words would have at least some consequences. You see, Mayorga didn't just speak out against De La Hoya, calling him a B-word on many occasions. After seeing these rude statements had no effect on his opponent, he decided to turn his attention to De La Hoya's family members, attacking both his wife and son with some choice words that we won't bother to repeat here. Although trash talking isn't exactly unlawful before stepping into the ring, it goes without saying that attacking the family of a fellow contender is crossing the line. Something that the public went on to repeat up until the start of the bout. Just like that, my 
Gorga had turned everyone against him, with a lack of support resulting in the man being knocked out in a display of excellence from De La Hoya. In other words, this moment wasn't just wrong, it also worked against Mayorga, who found himself spread eagle on the floor as a result of his poor choice of words. Next, the time Joe Frazier lost his cool with Muhammad Ali. Trash talking before fight night is nothing new to boxing. One of the greatest fighters of all time, Muhammad Ali, was known to run his mouth before entering the ring. He has a way of getting under his opponent's skin, and nowhere is this more obvious than the times he was set to touch gloves with Joe Frazier. Their rivalry is by far one of the biggest rivalries in the history of combat sports in general, and to this day it's still referred to whenever rivalries develop between athletes. But on one occasion, Joe Frazier lost his cool after getting quite offended by the statements made by Ali. Although the fighters had started out as friends in the industry, years of being pitted against one another developed a competitive loop that they couldn't escape. And Ali finally went a tad too far by making things political in the run-up to the so-called fight of the century. Rather than sticking to comments about his aesthetics, Ali went on to call Frazier an Uncle Tom, which is a racist term to describe black people who are over-eager to gain the respect and approval of white people. This was far from the only racist comment he threw Frazier's way, though, which resulted in Frazier becoming enraged and almost swinging at Ali's head. As it turns out, this eventually backfired, with Frazier going on to defeat Ali in what is now described as the greatest bout in boxing history. Last but not least, we have Sugar Ray Leonard, a retired professional boxer who is still regarded as one of the greatest boxing legends of all time. But as much as Leonard won, the pressure of the boxing world slowly crept up on him. After being surrounded by all the wrong people, he found himself slipping into a cage of addiction. And with everyone outside the ring calling him the best thing since sliced bread, he knew he would have to go to the extreme in an attempt to retain the title that he had been given. And so Sugar Ray Leonard resorted to cocaine during the 1980s. According to sources, this was just after his eye injury and was to a large extent used to rid the defending champion of his immense anxiety at the time. Funny enough, this little addiction of his almost cost him his life and career. But he was later able to defeat his demons and continue to fight unaided for another decade. Good thing, too, as losing someone like Sugar Ray would have been devastating to the sport. And there you have it. Some of the times boxers were willing to go way too far in an effort to win. Which of these moments took you by surprise, though? And did we perhaps miss out on your favorite? Feel free to let us know in the comment section down below.